Welcome to the third example for Physics 125, Chapter 1. This example, I hope you will find, is actually easier than the previous two examples. In class, often we have some that the instructor, Professor Siebelak or I, presents on the board, and some that we have students try on their own. And this is often one that we have students try on their own once they've seen a couple of examples of the process. So as always, what we're trying to do at the beginning is look for what we are starting with and what we are um, trying to get as a final unit. And just like in the example that we saw previously with the jet and gallons of fuel, the wording of this problem has two different numbers. 65 and 70. We can't start with both of them, and so what we need to do is choose one of them to be a conversion factor. So a typical heart rate is 65 beats per minute, and we want to estimate the number of heartbeats someone will have in 70 years. Now, 70 years is the specific time frame that this question is asking us to turn into heartbeats. And the heart rate of 65 beats per minute is a conversion factor whenever we are dealing with hearts, like the one in this problem. And so that 65 beats per minute, although it looks like a rate and it is, we can also treat that as a conversion factor. So we can write that out that our conversion factor that is specific to this problem, along with any other conversions that we have available to us in a standard kind of way, this problem also has the fact that 65 beats worth of time is equivalent to one minute on our clocks. That is a conversion between those two different units. Now we can use the other piece of information give us, given to us as our starting point. So we have 70 years, and we want heartbeats, or beats. OK. Just as with the previous two problems, our starting point begum, becomes the beginning of our train tracks. So we can see right now that we have years, and if we look ahead to our destination, we know that we want beats, and we've written down a conversion from beats to minutes, and so we need to turn the, this number of years into a number of minutes. So we just go through the time units that we are familiar with. One year is 365 days. We don't need to be more specific than that. One day has 24 hours. And one hour has 60 minutes. All right. So to make sure that we understand what our units have been doing, we can cross out anything that shows up on the top and the bottom, anything that shows up in equal amounts on the top and the bottom. And we have minutes right now, and we can see that that is where our new conversion factor comes in. Since minutes is on the top here, we want to put one minute on the bottom, and we want to put 65 beats here on the top. And 70 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 65. And all of that is over 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. So there's not really anything to divide. Our calculator tells us that this is 2, 3, 9, 1, 4, 8, Zero, 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 zero. A lot of students tend to struggle with the idea of significant figures when there's not a decimal place, 
But one thing I need us to recognize is that we still have this idea of significant figures, even when there's not a decimal place. These are placeholder zeros, that's beats, because what we could do to save ourselves a little bit of time is to write it in scientific notation. So 2.39 times 10 to the ninth beats. That is actually 2.4 billion beats in a 70 year span of time. So. Say thank you to your heart. It's doing a lot of hard work for you. Either method of writing out the number, either fully written out or in scientific notation is perfectly fine. We do want to be aware of significant digits, but something I mentioned briefly in one of the previous examples, in our lecture examples, we will typically just default to using three significant figures so that we can focus on the new skills. That's it for this example. Uh, sometimes students will start with 65 beats per minute, uh, and that would work out just fine. You would have 65 beats per minute, and then you would turn minutes into hours, hours into days, days into years, and then multiply it by 70 to cancel out the years. If you did that, what you will see is that your conversion or your train tracks basically looks exactly like this one does. You've just written it in the opposite direction. The train's going down the other direction on the tracks and that works just as well. Um, if that made more sense to you, that's, that's perfectly fine. All right, there is one last example for chapter one. So I will see you in that video.